This is Logan Secular as terrorists infiltrate the border. Senators demand answers. Keeping you informed and engaged. Now more than ever. This is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Logan Seculo. Welcome to Seculo. This is Logan Seculo sitting in today. We also have Will Haynes, executive producer of the broadcast, sitting in as well. We're going to take your calls at 1-800-684-3110 and your comments via Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, however you want to get them to us. We'll take some of those on the air as well. We wanted to open up this show talking about a new bill that was presented by Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana and Senator Roger Marshall, who will actually be on later in the broadcast. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The second half of the show, he'll be joining us about a new bill they introduced called the Where Are the Terrorists Now bill, essentially getting a report, Will, where they'll have to actually, Border Patrol will actually have to report back and say, here's how many people are coming through, who they are, from the terror watch list, as we know, it's getting more and more each and every um, day, it seems like. That's right. And that's something that we have fought hard for at the ACLJ for a while now. We we filed the FOIA request when we saw a cover-up by the Border Patrol and by the Department of Homeland Security when they had Yemeni nationals that were on the terror watch list and they pulled down the press release and they tried to cover it up and then they were concerned the horse was out of the barn was like a direct quote right. that we uncovered from the FOIA request. But what this bill does is help that process so that the American people can see accountability and they can also make sure that we know what's going on and that Congress can act appropriately. Yeah, it seems like pretty common sense here because this bill would require the Department of Homeland Security, as we said, to provide a monthly report to Congress disclosing the number of, of uh, illegal migrants who have come over that are on the FBI's terror watch list that U.S. officials encounter at the southern border. So that's a pretty, it seems like it should not be a controversial thing. It's something that we as Americans should know. It's definitely something that senators should know. Uh, again, doesn't feel controversial. Of course, it's going to be. As we know, uh, there's also all of this happening when the war in Israel is starting to really kick up. As we know, there was one of the largest ground invasions last night. Not a full-scale invasion. I probably didn't take that back. But ground action incursion, incursion. Was, was the word that was used. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that is is really on the on the brisk of this. Obviously, we also have what's going on. I don't want to to forget about or not mention. Obviously, the, the mass shooting that happened uh, in Maine last night. Uh, obviously, a horrible situation, and they still are having this manhunt currently to try to um, locate this shooter. Uh, it's a horrible situation. Can't imagine again. Just just that that this keeps happening. It's it's just appalling. It's horrible to see. Uh, so I'm not going to you know, ignore that. That being said, we do have a lot of content to cover today, a lot of stuff that's happening in the news, whether that's in the country or on the global stage. I want you to give me a call at 1-800-684-3110, 1-800-684-3110 with your questions or comments. We are going to be joined, as Will said, a little bit later by Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas. He's the one who put up this bill, again, the Where Are the Terrorists Now Act, as well as we'll be joined by Mike Pompeo later on. So it's going to be a very packed show. Uh, in the meantime, I did also want to tell you, about becoming an ACLJ champion. I'm going to remind you of this a few times today because it is headed towards the very end of this month. And that has been, this has been our champion's push for the entire month. And we are only, let me see the final number here, 298 short of our goal. And what an ACLJ champion is, is a recurring supporter, whether it's defending Israel or working on Capitol Hill, the courts defend your freedom. We need your support every month. And we're facing major challenges, whether that's defending Christians in numerous cages who, where they've been targeted for their faith on the small scale, like Bible studies banned, companies refusing to give them out at churches, or uh, the FBI on the biggest scale, FBI planning spies in churches. We also saw the 14th Amendment battles we've been involved in. Yesterday we had one. And we're taking on new cases of Jewish students and Christians. Obviously, you've seen the protests that are happening uh, in the really the unsafe situation for Jewish students and pro-Israel supporting students on college campuses, and we are getting involved directly in that. We're working to defend Israel also at the UN, which they desperately need. We can't do that without your support. Sometimes these cases take days. Sometimes they take years. And your recurring monthly donation is crucial to keeping us in these fights. So right now, just go to aclj.org slash champions. It's aclj.org slash champions. Become a champion today. Again, only 298 short of our goal for the month. We only have six days left to meet that goal. We'd love to do it today. Become a champion at aclj.org slash champions. Be right back with more on Seculo. 
is a new threat stemming from the Israel-Hamas war, this time at our own back door. An internal memo obtained by News Nation shows Customs and Border Protection is on high alert for anyone who could have ties to Hamas trying to take advantage of the southern border. What we can show you here is that memo that we were able to obtain here. The headline saying foreign fighters of Israel-Hamas conflict may potentially be encountered at southwest border. Now, this alert was sent out to the San Diego Field Office Intelligence Division, and it highlights three groups, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah. Well, I was in the White House on 9-11, and employee number one at the White House Office of Hamas and security after 9-11. Hmm. This is the biggest issue facing our country. and The biggest? I think so. I think that all these people, as that said on the headline, may be coming in, they're already in. And they've been coming in ever since this administration opened up the borders. Let's talk about the terror watch list, because we're also keeping track of that. Let's start in 2019. Okay, so this, Brian, is what a policy looks like. This is what a policy right. looks like. Fiscal year 2019. And then you can draw a bright line with things changing in that more. policy and how it grow, grew. Terror watch list. New president. Attempts to cross the border and it is exploding. This is exponential growth. They are so intent on appeasing all of these authoritarian regimes, even so much as still allowing an open border where Hamas and other terrorist organizations can openly cross. Um, this is really putting our own nation at risk. We know that Iran-backed terrorists for years have been eyeing the southern border. Last year, they tried to assassinate John Bolton right here in the United States by using a Mexican drug cartel. And the decade before that, they tried to kill the Saudi ambassador by blowing up a restaurant in Georgetown, again, by working with a Mexican mm -hmm. drug cartel. They're going to keep trying until they get it right. And with the border wide open, this is a gaping vulnerability. Welcome back to Secular. We are going to take your calls at 1-800-684-3110. We obviously talked about early in that first segment about the bill that is being placed by uh, Senator Marshall and by Senator Kennedy. And we should take a listen. This is from the hearing just, was it yesterday? Just yesterday from Senator John Kennedy. He's talking to the Assistant Director of Homeland Security Investigations. So take a listen. Since President Biden's been president, uh, how many non-American citizens have come into our country illegally or on the basis of a claim of asylum? Thank you, Senator. Um, HSI as an investigative agency is... Uh, how, how, do you know the number? No, Senator. You're a senior member of Homeland Security, are you not? That's correct. Does anybody know the number? None of you know the number. Try 8 million. That is from Senator John Kennedy. And it also, I mean, we do have some of those other numbers we can go through, including the just apprehensions alone. There was more than 2.4 million apprehensions in the 2023 fiscal year, which just ended, the fiscal year ended back in September. And that tops the previous record, which was only set, guess when? Last year, for more than 2.3 million. So, you know, it ticked up another <laughs> 100,000. Right. And this is the problem that we've seen from the start of this administration, and we've been calling attention to it, and the American people are concerned about it. It's an infiltration. It is millions and millions of people that they encounter. These are just the ones that are not gotaways. Yeah. Gotaways are yeah, 2 those that million. cross the border, and they don't Yeah, 2.4 million apprehensions. Right. So when uh, Senator Kennedy uses that number like 8 million, he's probably... Uh, close, at least to what that is. We have actually some more from him we could play in just a minute. But when you think about that, and we know that hundreds of people on the terror watch list, the FBI terror watch list, have crossed the border under this administration. Many have been caught. We do, What about those gotaways, once again, the ones you don't know? But as we see, like the San Diego office of the Border Patrol putting out a situational awareness memo concerning Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, that they are saying, hey, just be aware, these fighters could try to infiltrate our southern border. That shows the concern within the, the good people on the ground in the San Diego field office. That's also the office that put out the press release that we saw that was taken down and did FOIA to find out why. When they're trying to showcase, look, we're doing the work, we're trying to stop terrorists from coming in our country, and yet some people that are at the highest levels of these agencies don't even know the figures of people that are coming in. Right. 
it's it's as if they don't care and we've seen this over and over again it's it's finally starting to get where biden's like okay maybe now we need some funds for the border and he put that in that big appropriation bill that he wants you know 60 billion for yeah. ukraine a lot less for israel million, less for the border but at least they're trying to get funding now yeah. but you see how easily borders can be exploited it's why uh uh, the Egyptians have shut off their border to Gaza because they don't want the terrorists like Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, to exploit a porous border, chaotic border, when there's refugees and migrants trying to cross. And that's what we're seeing yeah. here in the United States. Hey, look, this is the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. You know, they are saying that we may be, they may potentially be encountered at the southwest border. Who is it? Hamas militants may potentially be trying to cross the border. People involved in the Israel-Hamas war now somewhat you go of course that's going to be the case they i'm glad they're putting out that warning because that warning is probably accurate that this is what's happening so it's not all these customs and border patrol agents it's they're right there's no funding there's a lot of like there, there's a lot of sensitivity with this issue as as there should be we're talking about human beings human lives and how do you determine whether uh, this person is, is seeking you know some form of asylum in the not directly asylum not in the technical term of asylum or, or, you know, escaping something. Uh, and how do you judge that based on the person of who's terrorist? Well, the easy way is, the first one is, are they on a terror watch list? And that is all that these senators are really asking for, which is just, hey, we want to know how many people on the terror watch list are coming through each and every month. You need to provide a report to us. Well, and here's also the problem. We know that when the press release went up about the Yemeni nationals that were caught, fortunately, that were on the terror watch list, once that field office put that press release out, the main office in D.C. had to get it down. They didn't want that out there, right? Same thing happening here with the situational awareness memo out of San Diego is that it gets out there. Fox reported on it. Daily Caller reported on it. Okay, you can say those are conservative outlets. Yep. ABC News reported on this memo. So journalists have done the reporting and felt confident to report that this is work product from the San Diego field office. Then, of course, the left comes out and tries to throw water on that because that defeats the narrative of an open border that they want. And this is vice news. So, you know, a, a more liberal out there, uh, progressive publication. But they sent an email to the Border Patrol office in D.C. and asked about this memo. They replied with they could neither confirm nor speak to potentially yeah. improperly disclosed information or internal documents marked as law enforcement sensitive or for official use only. But then they also noted that it was labeled situational awareness, not threat assessment. So they're trying to say we can't confirm or deny, but yeah, cause we're not saying there. it's a direct threat. They're trying to cover up, once again, the good work of the San Diego field office by trying to gloss over the narrative that there is actual national security threats to the United States. And they're even putting on here, here's like what the Hamas badges look like, here's what their logos look like, which also is maybe giving them a ridiculously low amount of credit, being like, you think they're going to sneak in to the United States? I mean, maybe they are uh, wearing their, you know, Hamas gear. I feel like that's just a bit, you know, that's a bit too on the nose. Are they going to wear the green headband that they wear when they attack? Yeah. Maybe if they're doing an actual invasion, well, sure. that's yeah. what they did in Israel. It's whether they're, but if they're trying to sneak, sneak across. Right. I doubt they're going to be wearing their uniform. So I understand the situation saying, look, I, they should be warning of this. I think it is happening. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take a phone call. Let's go to Phil, who's calling in New York on line one about the war in Israel. Let's go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. My question is, if um, Hezbollah gets involved in this conflict in a big way, do you think America will intervene directly? I mean, do you think American planes will bomb Hezbollah targets in Lebanon? I'm not sure about the specifics of will they bomb Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. And it depends on, but do I think we'll get involved? Yeah, I do. I think that, that America will get involved in some official capacity if there is this sort of war. Because sadly, as much as I don't want to say this out loud, if there is a war involving now you know, Lebanon or Iran and, and the countries surrounding Israel, uh, you are you are at sort of the, the beginning stages of, of a world war, especially with NATO and some of the things that they have to you know, buy into. Right. There are treaties. There are things that we have to do. We have to respond if there is a direct attack on NATO allies. That's right. And we also know that there's reporting out uh, just today that 
uh, Biden, and this is from the Washington Post, Biden weighs striking Iranian proxies after attacks on U.S. troops. So the Pentagon confirmed this week that there were 13 different attacks in just a week on U.S. troops or personnel in the region. Yeah. One U.S. contractor died of cardiac arrest after one of these attacks. Um, others have been injured. So we already know that the target on American troops and personnel is is looming there, but that it's growing. And the caller, he asked about uh, the pin- potential with Hezbollah. That is one of those Iranian proxies that is a lot more capable than even some of the terror groups, maybe in Syria or in Iraq. But the question does stand, and that's what the Washington Post is saying. Biden weighs striking Iranian proxies after attacks on U.S. troops. Well, Hezbollah is an Iranian proxy, and they are one of the stronger ones. So the the concept of the U.S. engaging more aggressively, we're not that far away from it. And we're going to ask Secretary Pompeo some of these questions in the next segment as he right. joins us with his expertise. That's right. He'll be joining us as well. If you have a question or comment, one 800 684 3110, as you said, there will be uh, Mike Pompeo will be joining us. Then later on, we have Senator Marshall, who's putting up that new uh, bill, which we have. We've been talking about the whole show, the uh, Where the Terrorists Now Act. So we're going to have that coming up later on. Uh, as we head into this break, of course, I want to tell you about becoming an ACLJ champion. I'm going to tell you about it almost each and every break. So get used to it, because I think right now is an important time. As we just said in that last call, I don't like using the, world's, the words world war. I think that's... Uh, Scary, something I hate to even think about with my kids, or that we'll have to have this discussion. But sadly, it's becoming more and more, I don't want to say inevitable, but it feels that way. It feels like we are headed towards something much bigger than any of us have experienced in our life. And I don't want that to happen. I desperately do not want that to happen. So with that, we have some incredible resources here, but we need your support. Because we have offices in Jerusalem. We have offices all around the world. Places we can say, places we can't say. Obviously, all around this country. So if you need legal help, or our friends in Israel need legal help, or if presidents of the United States, or if senior leaders need help, we can be there and support the work that they're doing. All you need to do is help out. Because right now, all of that work, if you want to need legal help, come to ACLJ, no cost. No cost to you. Well, how does that work? Well, it works because we have incredible ACLJ champions. Those who have said it said every month, I will dedicate a certain amount of resources monthly on a recurring basis to the ACLJ. And right now, this is the first time we've ever asked specifically for recurring donors, people to get involved, become ACLJ champions. So right now we're trying to do this throughout the rest of the month. We only got six, six days left. We are only 298 short of our goal. Become a champion today. The death toll rising here in Israel as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now warns this could be a long and difficult war. After a brutal surprise attack not seen in Israel in 50 years. These terrorists have one goal in mind. It's to slaughter as many civilians as possible. Hamas gunmen smash their way through the barrier that Israel uses to contain Palestinians in Gaza. The militants, designated as terrorists by the U.S., fired waves of rockets into Israel and arrived by sea and even in paragliders. It was a complex and coordinated attack. This was a full-scale land, sea and air invasion. There are 800 Israelis killed in, in basically in a day. That, by the way, is the equivalent of 26,000 Americans if you were doing it on a pro rata basis in one day. We are taking action. We are not, of course, you know we have an office in Jerusalem, and we've had that office there for many years, but we are taking direct action. We notified the United Nations through a legal letter that set forth uh, what laws have been violated on international law by Hamas. It's a hostile environment, the UN, but we have NGO status through our European Center for Law and Justice, and that gives us a voice. And listen, when you've got few voices speaking out for Israel, every voice counts. With all this going on in Israel, we want you to be a champion for Israel. And that is stand with Israel, be a champion for life, liberty, and freedom. Folks, support the work of the ACLJ, our office, ACLJ uh, Jerusalem. We can't do it without you. Be an ACLJ champion. Make that recurring donation at aclj.org slash champions. We're engaging on all these on a legal basis and on a policy basis. You can be an ACLJ champion and really help us out. Stand with Israel. Be a champion for life, liberty, and freedom by going to aclj.org slash champions and your monthly donations, your recurring support, 
makes you an ACLJ champion to stand with the ACLJ and to stand with Israel. Welcome back to Secular. We are now joined by Senior Counsel for Global Affairs, former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, who is joining us via phone. Uh, Secretary Pompeo, I just wanted to start this off. Uh, there, A lot of news has been coming out, but we're now finding out at least that 500 Hamas terrorists were trained in Iran in the days just leading up to the October 7th attacks in Israel. It feels like the Biden administration is playing catch-up when it comes to this threat. I want to get your thoughts on this, knowing now it's, that the Iranian connection is getting stronger and stronger. Now, Jordan, you and I talked about this last week. One of the very first statements from the Biden administration on October 8th or 9th was, we see no direct involvement. They used that word direct from Iran. You and I both knew that day that this was an Iranian attack. This was Iranian trained. This was Iranian funded. This was Iranian inspired. Would not have happened without the Islamic Republic of Iran driving the behavior of these barbarians to kill 1,400 and to still hold a dozen or so Americans hostage. And so, you know, the pretense that the Biden administration put out, frankly, I think so that they could avoid having to do the difficult task and the important task of deterring the Islamic Republic of Iran. I think that's why they uh, maintained that position. It's becoming, um, it, it was already laughable. I don't know where to go. It, it's now becoming dangerous. Refused to acknowledge that those Americans that were injured in Iraq were injured by the Iranians, that the Americans that are being held in Gaza today are being held by the Iranians. Hezbollah, uh, the IRGC senior leadership, uh, we're all together in Beirut just in the last few days. It is very clear. This is an Iranian effort to, to hold America, uh, to damage America. Israel is a a result of that. And we got to get serious about it. And the Biden administration is going to need to do that. Mr. Secretary, now the Biden administration, as reported by the uh, Washington Post, is weighing striking Iranian proxies after those attacks on the U.S. troops. We we were confirmed from the Pentagon there were 13 in one week by these Iranian proxies. As he considers military strikes now and, and continues to be playing catch up after that entire discussion we just had, um, what do you see as the path forward as this continues to escalate with the Iranian Republic uh, and and the United States? So you nailed it. That's the perfect description, playing catch up, right? What should have been done is Iran should have feared American power sufficiently that there'd still be 1,400 Israelis alive today. And they simply didn't do that. America failed to deter Iran. And so they've got to catch up. They've got to get on the front foot. Uh, now 13 attacks on Americans inside of the Middle East. Uh, that won't be limited to the Middle East in the end. And so it's good that they're going to go after these proxy forces. That, that's necessary. But it's going to be insufficient. If, if, if you're the Ayatollah or you're uh, Prime Minister, uh, President Raisi, or you're the head of the IRGC, and you pay some knucklehead in the desert in western Iran to go fire artillery at American forces, and we go take that guy out, that terrorist out in western Iraq, you're laughing because it costs you nothing. There was nothing that you put at risk. America put itself at risk. America was injured. America had to spend its money, its time, its attention. And you sit in Iran not feeling that there will be any cost imposed on you. In the end, the way you de-escalate, the way you prevent more carnage, the way you keep Hezbollah out of this fight or the Iranians in Syria out of this fight is to impose real costs on the regime itself. Told just yesterday or last couple of days, it's specifically saying that Hezbollah, not a, or I'm sorry, the Hamas, not a terrorist regime. These are, are, you know, freedom fighters, if you will. These are people who are going, it was a wild statement. And at the same time, because look, our, our audience may not know this. Currently, Iran's foreign minister is in New York City right now. And, you know, they're technically holding international consultations. Uh, you treated Iran a bit differently. You did not let these people come into the country. You treated them like terrorists. Why is this administration? I mean, we we obviously could just say, I mean, look at the obvious, but it feels like this administration has decided to treat them very differently than it was under you. Well, since the beginning, the Biden administration has taken the Obama administration's lead with respect to how to deal with Iran. Their theory of the case was if we pay them enough, if we appease them enough, if we stop enforcing sanctions, they'll behave normally. 
I think we can see that that's just foolish. And for four years, we demonstrated that you could both hold Iran accountable and avoid, you, you were talking earlier about world war, and actually reduce the risk that there is a set of larger, either regional or global fights, wars. If, if Iran feels free to move about the cabin, if they don't feel like there's any threat, you'll get exactly that. Your, your point about the Iranian foreign minister is a good example. When his predecessor, Foreign Minister Zarif, the then Foreign Minister of Iran, wanted to come to New York uh, ostensibly to do U.N. consultation, we denied him a visa. He had American blood on his hands. He killed American kids. This guy's even worse. This guy's got thousands of uh, Israeli people, blood on his hands. Now, he to this day, he's in New York City today. He's in New York City while Americans are being held in Gaza. That is unconscionable for this administration to have permitted that. And uh, it, is, it is a theory of the case that suggests if we play nice with the Islamic Republic, then they'll play nice with us. And it, is, it is sheer folly, and it's dangerous for America. One final question here, Mr. Secretary, is the elephant in the room in all of this is the Iran deal that the Biden administration has been so desperately trying to get back in. And we know that based off of the way that Jake Sullivan has been running uh, his shop there at the White House, as well as people like Robert Malley, who have now found themselves without a job because of how close they were with the Iranians. Uh, what do you think the prognosis is on the Iranian nuclear deal with the Biden administration as it stands today? I'm concerned about two things. Uh, the first is we got out of the deal because it provided a, a pathway for a nuclear weapon. Uh, the Biden administration essentially went back into it. They didn't formally sign it, but essentially went back to the, the policies that the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, required. That gave Iran a green light. It's now legal for them to sell drones, missiles to Russia. All of those are gone. But the other half of this is just it's about money. Uh, we began to impose real sanctions. We isolated Iran. Uh, they had some $4 billion foreign exchange reserves when we left. It's now almost $70 billion because sanctions aren't being enforced, that money will be used for two purposes, to build a nuclear program and to conduct terror campaigns across the world. It's certainly going to not go to the oppressed people inside of the Islamic Republic. So it's an enormous failure of this administration to allow the Iranians to grow their GDP, to grow their wealth, so that they can foment precisely the kind of barbaric terror we saw on October 7th. Thank you, Secretary Pompeo. Your insights, obviously, expertise is just amazing and we're incredibly blessed to have you here at the aclj so thank you for taking a few minutes today to chat with us and really to chat with our audience as you know everyone as we head into this next half hour of seculo i wanted to encourage you to one if you don't get us on your local station i know i say this a lot of you listen online or watch it on rumble and probably most of you watch on rumble watch it on youtube you should we look you know it's a cool show it looks visually fun to watch so i encourage you to flip on over if you're on an audio only format check us out on video, on Rumble, free speech platform, on YouTube, on ACLJ.org. However you get your uh, social media, we are there. Look at ACLJ, J Seculo, Seculo, you'll find us there. I trust you know how to you know, work the internet. But, we have a second half hour coming up. We have Senator Marshall joining us, who put in that bill, the Where the Terrorists Now Act. We're going to discuss that coming up with him in just a few minutes. But before then... I want you to go to aclj.org slash champions. Listen to Mike Pompeo. We can't have expertise like that without people like you supporting on a monthly recurring basis. So right now, again, only 298 short of that goal. We'll see if we can get an updated number. 298 short of that goal. That was the beginning of the show. Go to aclj.org slash champions right now to become an ACLJ champion today. Some people think champions are born. That it's a title that requires something only a handful can ever possess. But being a champion only requires a decision. Choosing what is right. Even when the loudest voices in the room say it's wrong or that it can't be done. And then following it through, no matter the cost. It can be a difficult stand. But it's one any of us can make, including you. Including you. Including you. Including you. You can change things. You can make a difference. You could be a champion. We can't do what we do without you. By becoming a monthly donor, you can become a champion of life. A champion of liberty, a champion of freedom. Please join us. Please join us. Please join us. Become an ACLJ champion today.
keeping you informed and engaged. Now more than ever, this is Seculo. And now your host, Logan Seculo. This is Logan Seculo. We're going to take your calls at 1-800-684-3110. Actually, let's start off with a call. Let's go to William in Alabama on line one. William, you're on the air. Yes. Uh, what's the point of having an oversight committee when, uh, for example, Kennedy calls my orcas up and asks him questions about the border, and he doesn't have any answers about anything. He says he doesn't know. And meanwhile, we've got tens of thousands of our enemies coming over the border, and they're all over the nation just uh, ready to uh, uh, do something that we don't want them to do. So, if there's, you know, what's the point? Well, you know, what's frustrating about the whole situation, William, is that we've been having to talk about it for so long within the Biden administration. The the bite from Senator Kennedy yesterday that we played, where the leadership in the Department of Homeland Security uh, didn't know the answers of how many people were coming across. Clearly, that isn't a priority, which is odd for the Department of Homeland Security. But here's what we are seeing that's a little bit different now is that we have been hammering this. We have been exposing it. We have been showing it. And President Biden did include $14 billion in that proposal for spending, uh, probably as a carrot to Republicans to try to get it across the finish line so we could get a lot more aid to Ukraine. But there was $14 billion. Now, remember, Democrats said that, I think it was $6 billion for a Trump border wall we couldn't afford. But now they can easily throw out $14 billion to help secure the border. Why? Because it's chaotic. It is absolutely needed. It is an in infiltration. You have the mayor of New York saying that the city can't survive how many migrants are being sent there. So, yes, it is a real crisis. But if those hearings weren't happening, then we wouldn't see it. But also, they control the funding. And we couldn't have gotten anything across uh, in these last three weeks because there was no Speaker of the House. That all changed yesterday after we went off the air in the very first vote for Representative Johnson, Mike Johnson, now Speaker Johnson from Louisiana. He did something that hadn't happened since 2011 for a Republican candidate for Speaker. He got the entire Republican conference unanimously to vote for him. So he has a mandate. He has every Republican unified behind him. And I think things like border security, now that... The craziness at the border that's going on, the Democrat-run cities that are now saying, we got to do something, I think that a Speaker Johnson can actually get something done, can get some of that funding, can get some security at the border. And that's something that we hadn't had for the past two years, is unity within the Republican conference to combat a lot of the things that the left is doing. And so it is really important. Yes, I understand it can be frustrating when you see hearing after hearing and you hear strong words but not a lot of action it also takes things like us filing FOIA requests trying to get to the bottom of why they're covering up that terrorists were getting in the country at all it's steps like that that lead to legislation like the where are the terrorists now act that we're going to talk with senator marshall about in the next segment about how important it is for that so that they can then appropriate appropriate the right money and hold the administration accountable for their failures. Yeah, we're going to absolutely talk about that with Senator Marshall coming up. We've been uh, teasing it along the way and telling you it's coming up. It's going to be a really interesting conversation. You're going to want to stay tuned for that because you're right. There are ways that accountability can be held. And look, some of this is putting the pressure on. I understand sometimes the answers are like Kennedy yesterday of how many people? I don't know. Well, that also, what that does is show the American people the failures of an administration. It also shows you the failures of what's happening. So you can at least expose not only the hypocrisy that's happening, but also the intelligence failures that is happening at the highest of levels. So sometimes you may not get the answer you want, but inadvertently that that answer you didn't want is what the American people need to see. And that is what's happening here right now. And that is what senators are trying to get done. And you're right. Now that there is a new Speaker of the House, things can start moving along. You know, Mike Johnson tonight is going to be on uh, Sean Hannity, on Hannity on Fox. That'll be interesting. And currently... You know, since we started this broadcast, you know, earlier I told you we were 298 short of our ACLJ champion goal. Well, a lot of you have responded. We are now only at 289 away from our goal. Those are people, remember, I know that doesn't sound like a big jump. Those are people that are dedicating every month to be a part of the ACLJ at aclj.org slash champions. 
also getting new reports confirming what we've been told by intelligence experts all along. Iran had a large role in helping Hamas prepare for its deadly and surprise assault on October 7th. Iran, Siyali, Hamas. Iran helped Hamas before the war directly, with training, supplying weapons, money, technological know-how. Even at these moments, Iranian aid to Hamas continues in intelligence and incitement on the networks, and encouragement all over the world in incitement against the state of Israel. Why is Iran such a menace for Israel? These are the, the routes that we believe are generally used out of Iran. All right, pretty easy route to smuggle missiles, rockets, armaments across the northern edge of Iraq cross Syria, north of Beirut. Another easy route, too, here through Iraq and uh, th central Syria as well. Politico is out with a new article titled Battleground Dem Senators Consider Bucking Biden on Border, Iran. The authors write this. In interviews, a trio of Democrat senators from GOP states, all of whom are up for re-election next year, criticized Biden's handling of the border and indicated that they're considering signing on to Republican push legislation to freeze the $6 billion in Iranian assets. Are you kidding me? You're considering freezing the $6 billion? Now I, you're, you're going to tell me you're considering it? I mean, how ridiculous. Wow. I mean, I... Shut it down already. More money to Iran as they're creating death and destruction in Israel. The 14 times that our bases have been hit in just the last few weeks is on top of 70 to 80 times in the last two years. And there have been zero consequences for it. And to the extent that there is, it's only against the proxies not against Iran itself. And that was the paradigm shift under President Trump and Mike Pompeo. They imposed consequences on Iran by taking out their, their most effective field general, Soleimani. Welcome back to Secula. We are joined by Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. As we've been talking about, all broadcast is one who introduced the bill. Where are the terrorists now act? I'm going to ask you, Senator, just to start off for our audience, maybe just tuning in or maybe to understand what does your bill require, especially of the DHS? That's different from what's already being done when it comes to tracking people on the terror watch list. Right. So we've had 170 terrorists on the watch list encountered at the border over the past year. We have no idea where they are, who they are, were they caught and released. So what our bill does is it requires uh, Secretary Mayorkas uh, to communicate with Congress on a monthly basis. Give us an update on who these people are, uh, where they are. You know, are, are they working for universities doing research? Are they uh, working for our military? What are these people doing? So it pulled them accountable. And in addition to those 170 people on the terrorist list, there's also 60,000 people of interest. From the, from the Middle East, from Iran, Syria, Turkey, and Afghan. We want to know where those people are, in addition to 20,000 Chinese nationalists that have been encountered at our borders over the past year. Senator, we know that the border has never been more open than it is right now, and the Biden administration doesn't want to admit that these members that are on, these migrants that are on the terror watch list are crossing the border. Uh, shouldn't they have a better plan in place by this point when they've seen how much has been happening at the border than what they're doing right now? Well, of course they would. I want to make two points. Then, number one, this is why we called uh, in April this year for a, a resolution of no confidence in Secretary Mayorkas, hoping that would launch some type of an impeachment investigation on the House side. And point two is Joe Biden wants this problem. I mean, I go back home, people ask me, why doesn't Joe Biden fix this problem? He wants these 8 million people that have crossed the border under his watch. He wants them voting Democrats over the next years to come. So Joe Biden wants this problem. All the more I'm frustrated with the fact on his latest legislation uh, to fund Israel and Ukraine, when his border uh, solution was actually to make the asylum process more efficient so more people would be crossing the border. Yeah, but we want to talk to you a little bit later uh, in this segment about specifically some of the work you've been doing in terms of Israel uh, coming up. But we also know that hundreds of people are coming on from the terror watch list, as you said, have already been caught under this administration. I guess for the American people, as someone who's dealt with not just not just the terror watch list, the traditional we're thinking of, of what's going on in Israel, and, and obviously this has sparked a lot of this, but we all know about the fentanyl crisis. We've all been directly involved in it in terms of everyone knows somebody or has a family member who 
uh, sadly, he's either passed away or has had some sort of adverse effect to what's happening in this world, this crisis that really is uh, one of our biggest threats. I guess what number is it? Is it hundreds? Is it thousands? When is that going to be enough? What number is too many before we can all say this is enough? Well, certainly here in the Senate, I'm starting to hear my friends across the aisle scream a little bit. And basically it's because you look at the state of New York, I think they've had 100,000 uh, illegal migrants released into their state and just the tax it is on that state uh, alone. But, but to your point, you know, we, there's, the number's already been hit. How can Joe Biden sleep at night when 300 Americans die every day from fentanyl poisoning? So over the past year, we've lost more young adults to fentanyl poisoning than we did the entire Vietnam War. We haven't touched on human trafficking, all the other atrocities that the cartel is doing. The cartel is alive and well in the state of Kansas and in your state as well. So we should have hit that number a long time ago. And that's why I say uh, don't listen to what Joe Biden says. Watch what he does. He actually wants this problem. He's trying to make it easier for illegal migrants to come into our nation. Senator, you alluded to it a little bit earlier, but you've introduced legislation with your colleagues in the Senate. Uh, Senator Vance, Senator Lee, and Senator Cruz, and some others as well I know have joined uh, to essentially break out the funding that President Biden proposed that he tied to the Ukraine funding. Um, Why do you believe this is important uh, to separate these funds as it gets appropriated uh, to not have a, a bill that ties up all these issues into one? Yeah, it's so disappointing that the Biden administration won't state the the situation in Israel clearly. They need the funding yesterday. They're about to have three very active border wars, three fronts going on. Plus, you have the Houthis in, in Yemen are launching missiles all the way to, to Israel. You have action in Syria, in Iraq as well. Israel desperately needs the help yesterday. As opposed to the Ukraine funding is very controversial. It's dead on arrival in the House. And any type of process over here, we will debate it for weeks, if not months, if you include Ukraine funding. If we have a standalone Israel funding package, it'll be a near unanimous vote on the Senate and and close to unanimous vote on the House. We could get this done this week and certainly by the first of next week. Leave it to Joe Biden to find a way to divide his own party and divide Congress. The best president we could give the Speaker of the House right now would be legislation to secure the border with policy changes and build the wall, and then some type of a standalone package on Israel funding. Senator Marshall, we appreciate you coming on and discussing this and really breaking it down for our people. I do have one sort of last question, and that is a lot of our listeners, and look, there's just alone on, on social media, thousands, and there's millions that, that listen throughout the day or, or later on or on our podcast feed or on Rumble or on terrestrial radio. A lot of them call in and just say they feel lost. They feel like they have nothing that they can do to help. They'll hear people like you and go, okay, good. There's somebody out there representing me and can actually hopefully get some stuff done, but they feel a little lost. I'm just going to ask you, what should our listeners do to help? How can they help? How can they support what's going on, whether it's this bill or any of the others that you're putting up? Yeah, so number one is elections have consequences. As long as the Democrats control the majority on the Senate, all we can do is fight and slow them down. As long as Joe Biden's in the White House, we're going to have a weak America. You know, Joe Biden brings us war through weakness. So I think, you know, really, this getting out the vote, uh, what our plan is to chase the ballots. Whatever you can do legally in your states, as your, as your folks start thinking about how do we chase these ballots legally. And the last thing I would say is this. The best thing you could do for me is find – Godly young men and women, and I say young, relatively young adults with with American values, run for the school board, run for the county commission, run for the county clerk. We need people in those positions who can stop some of these fears that Joe Biden is throwing at him. I mean, you know, even today we're fighting Joe Biden over school lunches and the transgender issue, that he's going to take school lunches away from you unless you allow biological boys into girls' locker room and allow biological boys compete against girls. So I need these young folks that are believers running for school board. And if you're not going to run, then you know the person that should, that really busy person that's a professional, that has the same values that you and I share, that would be great school board members. I think that's where to stop. Of course, reach out to your congressman and senator, but I really believe that we're going to do this from the grassroots up is where we need to have a change in America. Get down on our knees, 
confess our sins and let's come back to God. Let's go back to church. Let's go back to the synagogues. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Marshall, for joining us on the broadcast today. It was last minute to get you on, but I appreciate you coming on, discuss your bill and everything else you got going on. I do want to encourage everyone right now to give us a call. I'm going to take as many calls as I can. So if you've ever wanted to say, hey, I'm on, I'm on the radio. Hey, I get my voice heard. It's a good time to do it. Give me a call. 1-800-684-3110. It could be about one of the topics we've talked about today, whether that's Israel, what's happening uh, in, in obviously the war in Hamas and all of that, or it could be about uh, the terror watch list at the border or the border in general, really any of our ACLJ type related issues, I'll try to get as many calls as I can. 1-800-684-3110. As I said in the last segment, we have seen already an uptick of people who've decided to become ACLJ champions. I want to encourage you all to do that as well. Just go to aclj.org slash champions. There's a lot of great resources on our website. So even though, even if you can't support it, I understand this is some trying financial times, but we're asking, we've never asked to become a recurring member in terms of us on on air. That has never happened. But this month we've done it. We've said, you know what? It would be awesome. It would be amazing. It would be a, a, a godsend to be able to say we can project a year out, six months out, you know, whatever it may be, to create a real baseline for a massive vision we have for this organization that goes well beyond a radio show, a television broadcast, legal cases. We have so much plans and so big of a vision and we can't do that without support from you all we can't have people like mike pompeo on this broadcast each and every week he's not just part of the broadcast team he's a part of the organization we couldn't do that without your support and we're able to offer all this content and everything we do here at no cost to you so if you're a someone who supports us and wants to be really engaged in a different way become an aclj champion aclj.org slash champions it's an important time to do it this is great so we're heading into the end of the year we can really use it. And as a war is looming in Israel, not looming, a war is, is ongoing in Israel and just getting hotter and hotter every day, we could use that support specifically for our offices in Israel and the amount of work we do uh, with Israel and our support for them, whether that's at the UN or around the world. Give us a call, though, right now, 1-800-684-3110. We're going to take your calls. Coming up in the next segment, if you're on hold, stay on hold. Some of you have been on hold for a long time. The next segment is when we're going to do it. So again... Give us a call, 1-800-684-3110. Also, if you're watching on Rumble, I'm going to ask you to click that follow button, click that thumbs up. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. All that does is get more people to know about this broadcast. And through us, hopefully your point of view or, or similar points of view can be shared. So again, hit the thumbs up, hit the like, whatever it may be, and tell your friends. We'll be right back with more on Secular. Well, if you donate any amount ever, we appreciate that so much. But if you're a monthly donor, we want to acknowledge you as an ACLJ champion. You're a champion of life, of liberty, and of freedom. And I just want to take a moment to thank you and personally recognize the important role that you play in the ACLJ. We have 15,000 of you right now, which is fantastic. I want to double that in the next year. So we want to get that to 30,000. And we believe we could do it. And we're going to do it day by day. You know we're handling the most complex litigation you can imagine. Stuff we never even thought that would be litigated is now being litigated and we're doing that but we need you to become part of that team it's how we continue to expand our work it's how we're ready to fight all those 14th amendment cases all over the country wherever we need to be and those are fast track cases i mean these are complex stuff 14th amendment section 3 there's not a lot of law in it we're going to we're making law these are going to be done before the ballots are printed so you got to be ready to go all in the moment you take the case because it's going to be fast tracked all the way through the legal system and you can't assume that they're just going to get tossed out of court you have to assume you could end up at the u.s supreme court we bolstered our team we brought in some of my colleagues that represented the former president you need resources to do that our aclj champions make that happen we're about to file a major lawsuit for charlie kirk and tp usa we're representing those whistleblowers on capitol hill file the brief in the supreme court on the abortion cases religious liberty cases in the united states and around the globe defending israel at international tribunals and defending persecuted christians in places like Pakistan and Iran. Our cases take months, sometimes years, and that's why your sustaining monthly donations are crucial. So we need you to become an ACLJ champion today. Go to aclj.org slash champions and become a recurring donor at whatever amount you're comfortable with at aclj.org slash champions. So go to aclj.org forward slash champions and you could join this elite group of our ACLJ donors who stand with us each and every month. All right, welcome back.
Welcome back to Secular. We're going to wrap up today's show by taking all the calls we can. So let's go ahead and start from the top. Let's go to Ralph, who's calling on line six. Ralph, you're going to hold for 30 minutes. Call from Louisiana, listening on the radio. Sorry for your uh, wait, but you're on the air now. No problem. We have a rule inside of America that all Americans actually know. It's he who has the gold makes the rules. So I appreciate a bill that is sponsored at telling us where these people are, these 8 million people are. But why don't they sponsor a bill that punishes the American employer for employing these people? If they did that, like we didn't sell them cars, we didn't sell them anything, there'd be no reason to come here. The people who are truly guilty are the ones who are renting houses to them, the ones who are employing them. Yeah, Ralph, I, mean, I think there are some of those in existence, like an there E-Verify laws, laws right. that happen. Obviously, there's a lot that happens off the books. We know that that's, that's the case. Uh, truthfully, though, uh, there are a lot of people. I mean, sure, there are some that are giving them jobs. But truthfully, the concern that we have right now in a bigger scale is terrorists coming through, right. people, gangs coming through, uh, people who are terrorizing our cities in terms of uh, you know, the drug cartels. That is, to me, the number one concern. Sure, do you want to uh, make it a little stricter? Absolutely, you can. You can make it more strict in terms of the way that we handle uh, employment here in the United States. But there are some of that stuff already in place. Sure, there's there's cash and, and gig work that's happening around the country. We're not going to be blind to that. But to me, it, it's, it's on the list, certainly, but it's not number one for me right now. The other factor to that is that you have to look at who would have to sign that legislation. President Biden is not likely to sign a legislation to strengthen that when he is expanding the pathways for asylum claims in the United States. So many of these people that arrive, the ones that are encountered, when you look at these millions that are encountered, they come and they then claim asylum. They make an asylum claim that say, we are uh, dealing with persecution at home and therefore we need to come to the United States to seek asylum. Once they claim that, it's a different process than if they were just caught and not claiming asylum. And the Biden administration is expanding pathways for asylum claims. Uh, there's a huge backlog in the asylum court cases. Therefore, you get a court date, and many times you never show up or they never end up seeing a judge because they end up being in the United States for decades before they get to their backlogged case. It's millions of backlogged cases. So the the reality on the ground is uh, legislation like that would be nice, but it's not at this point uh, a feasible pathway to get something like that signed. That's why something that's holding the administration accountable, I actually feel like Senator Marshall could get some bipartisan support because there are many U.S. senators that are concerned, especially in this moment, when you see what happened in Israel, when you see the Border Patrol memo on the potential of Hamas exploiting our southern border. We already know that these terrorist organizations are. You could see bipartisan support so that Congress can be armed with the appropriate information from the administration. I think it could get through. We'll see. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the next call. Let's go to Joanne, who's calling in Ohio on line one, calling uh, from Ohio, but watching on ACLJ.org. You're on the air. Hi, guys. Um, I think Senator Marshall kind of said this, too. But in that money that Biden is proposing for Ukraine and Israel and the border, that border money is to facilitate moving these people out into the country. It's not for mass deportation. It's time that everybody understands whatever Joe Biden and the Democrats are putting forward is disingenuous in some way. I mean, we have to start thinking about this. I mean, this is, you know, this money isn't to get people out. This money is to figure out a better way to get them in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is something that we've uh, tried to say here. Also, we do believe there should be uh, a, definitely a reform in the way that the process at the border takes place, whether that is, like you said, just the idea of, of deporting millions and millions of people, just the time and resources, virtually impossible. As much as some of you may call in and say you want it, that's not the case. So what can we do now that people are here? We're going to keep working through that. Glad to get your voice heard on the air. Continuing on, let's go to uh, Terry, who's calling in Ohio. Uh, listen on the radio, Terry, you're on the air. Hi, thank you, and thank you guys at ACLJ for everything you do. We really, really appreciate it. We've got an issue one in Ohio, which is just a terribly written issue. Ro Roe v. Wade was kicked out, and now a lot of the Democrats are reacting emotionally 
and saying we want to have our abortion rights back and they're going to vote for this and it's 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 uh way broader than just abortion it it puts it puts the state in charge and takes away parental rights and obligations yeah terry we're seeing this across the country we are seeing these radical uh pro-abortion laws being put in place in states that are you're right reacting to the overturning of Roe last year uh, to a point of, look, and honestly, we're losing some of these, so we really need the help to not only have people like you out there, but have people who can go and make strong statements for life right now because overturning Roe obviously was a massive win, but what's come of it is 50 new cases or 50 new state laws that could come to place. Obviously, you have states maybe in the south where it's become much more restrictive, and then you have states in the north and you have states in the west where it's become so unrestricted to where you know, the, you know, the taxpayer money is flying people in. It's a wild time right now, and we are involved in so many of those cases, and I appreciate you calling in, Terry. A lot of us fighting for life as well across the country. Let's go ahead and go to Shana, who's calling in Pennsylvania on line four. Shana, you're on the air. Hi, I'm calling. I have a message. So I'm Jewish. I have a son in Israel in the Europe Abroad program, and my message to the world is that if you don't see the truth, then clearly you don't want to because the issue going on in Israel is black and white. There's no opinion. It is a fact that Israel is being persecuted, that the Jewish people there are being killed and slaughtered for no reason. These people are full of hate. And anybody going to these Palestinian marches, by the way, any of you who are in a minority group, that's just ridiculously yeah. stupid because they hate you. They would kill anybody in minority group, gay people, black people. It doesn't matter. They don't. <laughs> Thank you. Shana, we are sitting there seeing this across the country, seeing these protests. My wife and I were talking about last night how it's one of the most disturbing things we could even imagine happening. You see at Cooper Union last night where Palestinian protesters, security had to lock the Jewish students in a room in the yeah. library. And the protesters were banging on the doors, persecuting, intimidating, striking fear in the Jewish students in America. Hey, I want to quickly take Moshe, who's calling in New York right now, because we are running out of time. Moshe just came back from Israel. Uh, we only have about 30 seconds for you, but I appreciate you calling in. Hello, how are you? Good, go ahead. Okay, listen, I'm listening to your, your uh, program, which is beautiful, very interesting. And me personally, I have a radio station in Miami, in Hebrew, of course. But I just want to tell you something. I was in the front line two weeks ago in the day of Simchat Torah, which is a Jewish holiday, very, very holy holiday. And when people go into dance with the Torah and everything, all of a sudden, you're getting a thousand or two thousand dollars, two thousand missiles on top of people, children, innocent people, pregnant women. They don't care what they do. They have one thing in their mind: to kill, to kill and take over the whole nation. Not only Israel. You have to understand. In five years from today, Europe is going to be Muslim country. You're not going to be able to do it. And you see that in our country here in America. They're taking over every pay, every piece. Roger, I'm, I, am, I am not cutting you off because I disagree. Or I'm not cutting you off because of anything else. We are just out of time. I appreciate you calling in, telling us your experience in Israel, what's happening. I think a lot of people in Europe are feeling that same pressure that you're feeling as well. Thank you, though, for calling. I'm going to look up your radio station, actually, in Israel. Maybe we can find out you know, what it is. I'd love to know. Miami. I'm in Miami. That's, that's a Hebrew station. That'd be very interesting to hear. Let's find that out from him. Here's the deal. We only got 10 seconds left. I'm just going to tell you, become an ACLJ champion today. Go to aclj.org slash champions. That's aclj.org slash champions. Become a recurring donor. The ACLJ will talk to you tomorrow.